Hi folks, we've got this window latch. Let's walk through how we can cam it up, including the work holding and fixturing. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So this one should be pretty good. This will be, uh, this will be tricky. And I haven't practiced this yet, so uh, we'll This should be pretty good and you know, maybe a little tricky. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna model my stock because I, I know that I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to machine this. So. <laughs> First thing I want to do is I want to model my stock, but I also, I want this to be the top view and see how right there it says that that's the bottom view. So I'm going to see, I'm going to orient it like this, right click on the house. I set current view as, as front. Awesome. That means if I click front, I go back to what I think of as at the right view. The other thing I'm going to do, I don't want these fillets on here. They're much more difficult to machine with corner rounded tools. I would much rather do a chamfer. Um, now you could uh, defeature these. Fusion does a great job. You would go through and hold down the control key and click each one. And you know, that's not too bad here. In fact, I just hit delete and it deleted some of them. But let's say you had a really, really long version of this and you didn't want to click each one. There's two ways we can do it. We got lucky on this one because there's this new, there there's sketches. If I turn that on, the file already has the outline that we need. So we're gonna use that. If he didn't have that, you could use a project command and project the profile. So I would hit P, my keyboard, select the plane. I wanna pick this plane right here. What do I wanna project? It's basically the same thing that we've got in our outline. So I'd click on this right here and I would have to add Heck, we'll just do it this way. L for line, I'd need to add a line. Actually, P for project. I'll go ahead and project. I want to look at this normal too. Maybe I screwed something up with that view cube. So see this little uh, box with the zigzag uh, saw on top of it? Click that and click a face and that orients you normal too. Awesome little trick. So good, I got a purple line all the way around, except maybe right here. There we go. Now I can hit E for extrude. Click that, click that. So what I wanna do is change it to a join. And I'll just say distance negative 0.1. Click okay. And that's kind of a crude way, but hey, it works of getting that fixed. I can now do a chamfer, click, I'll turn that sketch off here. That's a bummer, I was hoping I could click the whole face uh, and say 0.02, cool. Right click on your file name, top left here, new component, call it stock. L for line. I want to fix my, I've, I've screwed that up, but the front view is not perfectly flat. So let's do normal to this face and let's right click and say set that view as front. There we go. That's better. Now I don't want to use a piece of stock that's this big. That's way too big. I could do something tighter if I do a, a, a more rectangular shape. So let's hit L for line. Click here. And I'm just going to sketch a really crude shape. It's not gonna be a rectangle, we'll fix that with constraints. T for trim, I didn't realize I got that piece. So, now I'll hit parallel. Actually, you know, we'll just do uh, perpendicular. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that forces it to be a rectangle. D for dimension, we'll say 2.5. And I'll say, 5.5. What I can now do is just drag this. So that should work just fine. So I don't want that to move. I like it where it is, but there's nothing I can do to like constrain it, you know, using the dimension from something else. But all I have to do is click the four lines and do fix unfix. That turns them green and I now can't move them, even though they aren't locked in relative to anything else. E for extrude. I'm gonna turn my latch off, and I'm just gonna say, that's weird, negative 
five. Is that thick enough? I think so. Click OK. How thick is my latch? Hit I on your keyboard. Shift is an easier way to measure. Shift on that face, shift on this face, click, and we can see it's 375 actually. So uh, let's do it as um, 375 on our stock. Right click down here, edit, negative 0.3. Perfect. So let's head over to cam and start to see what we see what we get come up with here. I'm going to turn my light bulb off on my stock because I don't want to see it right now. I want to focus on the work piece. So come into model, cam, new setup, and st I'm going to go to stock first. And what's my stock mode from solid? I'm going to expand my CAD tree up here on the top left of your screen. Expand. Oh, where'd my oh, there's my stock. Stock. Expand the bodies and pick that body. And that is great because that tells you that's that size of what was it, two and a half by five and a half inch piece of stock. Now go back to setup. And we've got to do some work here because we've got to fix the orientation. So I'm going to select, instead of from uh, model orientation, I'm going to select so this first option Z axis and X axis. What's my Z axis? Just click any face like this that's perpendicular to. Now what's my X axis? Well, unfortunately I don't really have anything. What I want to use is a line that's on the stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and for temporarily click the light bulb to turn the stock back on. And if I click this line now, I get, I'm pretty much perfect, except I wanna flip my X axis, which will flip the Y as well. So watch, if I click the tip of the X, Boom, done. I can turn my stock visibility back off. And I've now dealt with the fact that I had this sort of unusual orientation of the cam relative to how the part was situated in the CAD side. Click OK. So how am I going to machine this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it uh, or do it a little bit different than normal. If I Let's say I just only want to make one of these. I wasn't going to go through the time to create some pretty complex uh, or time-consuming fixtures. I'm going to do, now remember, we're holding this in a vise, so I don't really have, depending on the diameter of my tool, I don't necessarily have access to run a tool, say, along this face right here, because it may hit my the jaws of my vise. So this is what I'm thinking right now. So we're going to do an adaptive strategy, and we're going to get this plane cut out and this hole drilled, and then we'll see, then we'll see where we're at. It's okay. Break it down into steps. So I'll do 2D adaptive clearing. I pick a quarter inch end mill and I'll pick this area right here and uh, see I need to close that off so see how it doesn't see it as a closed contour so if I click this blue line once again and let up I switch to a closed contour and ooh, look at that it went ahead and it fixed it except I don't want to machine it along that line because that would violate the 2D contours are dumb. Uh, you can click here for a link to a past Fusion Friday where we talk about 2D versus 3D adaptives and how they respect or violate the solid model. But 2D uh, adaptive is dumb. If you can let it go somewhere, it might. So I want to update it to this line. See how I hover over between the two? Let me show you that again in case you missed it. I'll start over. So I'm in 2D adaptive. I'm going to hover over here. I want to flip my arrow because I want to cut the inside. So flip that once. But the problem is that it, it's going to, actually, we'll just click OK. It's going to machine right through my part. If I toggle the visibility off, you can see it's going to, all this area right here, that's going to ruin my part. So I need to close that contour. Right click, edit, geometry. This looks complicated. It's easy once you do it a few times. Click on my blue line once and let up. Now I'm going to switch this from an open contour to a closed contour and it tried to take a guess at it and it's honestly not a bad guess uh, but the problem again is that I don't want the tool to go over and crash through this fillet here. So if I move my mouse right over to here, perfect. Now the only little gotcha is after you do that you've got to click the green plus to accept the current contour. Click that 
That's weird, it flipped my arrow, no big deal. Flip it back in, click OK, should be OK. Nope, that's a glitch. Huh, there we go. Okay, so it didn't get through here. Uh, so it used, let's switch to a smaller tool. Or, first, under your fourth tab, passes. Minimum cutting radius. That's basically how small of a cut am I allowed to take. If you find your tools are taking tiny whisper cuts and it annoys you, increase this number. For now, let's go down to one thousandth of an inch. It's probably smaller than I'd normally want to run, but guess what? It's going to let me solve that problem, which is perfect. So in this case, you know what? I don't really care. Uh, how long is this tool path? 53 seconds. I'm not even going to bother worrying about fixing it. Take a look at the simulation. What does that look like? I really like to scrub along instead of hitting play. Just use your mouse and drag through. You can kind of see what you get. Cool. So that's fine. Uh, hit close. You can see what that does. Okay, now let's drill this hole right here because that's going to play a key role. Drilling, pick a quarter inch drill, pick our hole, and we'll go all the way through it. Stock bottom is my hole bottom, which is in this case is the same as the model bottom, and I'm going to uh, offset it by negative 0.1 or some, some amount. If you look at the green toolpath, you can see that drill tip's going all the way through. Click OK. Again, I'm a big fan of simulation. Click on the setup though first. Simulate and just fast forward. See this go to end of toolpath option button right here. And that's what we get. So there's a couple schools of thought. Um, and again, I'm kind of, I'm doing this on the fly, but as a general rule, when I'm holding it in a pretty secure vise, I'd like to do as much work as I can. Uh, the problem is I can't interfere with my vise jaws. So how do you want to do that? Well, we could just pick it out right now and move it over to the fixture plate. And let's, in fact, pull the fixture plate in. Uh, but I think I've got an idea. You know, Fusion doesn't yet have fixture um, detection and collision avoidance. So in other words, if I put in clamps or plates, you can't have it avoid them. But there is a way we can fake it. Um, but what I also want to do is the second op is going to be to use a screw and a washer to clamp this piece down kind of as it looks here. And we'll use a clamp over here on the left side of the part. And that'll give us two work holding points. Two is okay. Three is always a little bit better. But two should be fine here. And that means we can go clean up the rest of this part, do the rest of the work. Again, subject to having a little clamp over here. And then before we remove that clamp, this material will all be gone because that op's done. We'll put a clamp across it here. Then we can take that clamp off and it will have never moved. So it's sort of... Um, it's like 2.5 operations. There's a second operation that has kind of two different points where you move a clamp. So we're going to use, and if, you know, if you guys want, maybe we'll machine one of these for a, a Wednesday widget. I think that'd be pretty fun. I'm going to use one of my Saunders mini vice pallets. We actually just started selling these. It's the first product that we're making on our new Haas. So if I insert into current design, actually, I probably need to hop back into model. Uh, insert, right click on it, insert into current design. It's probably going to bring it in in a terrible orientation. Um, let's move it down. So one of the, you know, it's funny. When I first was starting to use Fusion, I, I really hated this. I thought it was very childish, this way you kind of manu manipulate it and move stuff around. Honestly, now, I, I really don't mind it at all. So I'm going to drag it down. Now I'm going to orient it this way and drag this over here. And, okay, that's good enough. I'm going to use a joint. To, to lock up the final orientation of it. So click, so do I like that? Yeah, click OK. Now <clears throat> I can do assemble, joint. It'll be a rigid joint. What's my first component? It's this guy. So I can't get to the hole I want to see, so I'll turn off the visibility of the palette for now by clicking on its light bulb. I'll zoom in and I'll click a, that coin right there. Now, turn my vice palette back on and I'll click on this hole right here. And look, that locks us in. Click OK. Sweet. 
so now what we would do is go back into camp. We'll just finish it this way for now. We've got our stock like this, so we would have a little clamp strapped across here. So let's model something like that so that we can uh, avoid it, it being machined into. Right click, actually go back into model, right click, new component, clamp. Rectangle, we'll start it, say right to here. And I'll just draw it. Let's just stay away from this whole area right here. It'll just be easier. Extrude this up. And we'll say 0.5. I definitely don't want the toolpath coming over there. Now we'll hop back into cam. So here's the really good thing about this. Because we're using a, a fixture plate like this, we are now, for our operation 2, going to use a different point as our, Z, our, as our coordinate system location, which is awesome, because you're going to take this piece out of the uh, vise and move it over to the plate. In fact, if we do film a Wednesday widget, we'll put a card here uh, in the future to, to what that video was. So new setup, stock. So setup, I'll check, click the X here next to the, all these bodies, and it's still only going to be this. Uh, I think we need this as well. Stock will be, see unfortunately you can't carry through stock from prior operations yet in Fusion 360, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so it'll be from solid, I'll pick that stock again, like we did in the first part. And setup, I will do selected point, uh, sorry, select Z axis and X axis, so this is my Z, this is my X, and we'll pick a point stock box point, it'll be a model box point, actually no, it'll be a selected point, which gives me. Unchamfered edge of this, let me go fix that real quick. In fact, we can fix that by activating it, and for now, I will just click on that and hit delete. That gives me my uh, point back, although I'll delete these two as well. Um, that's a great, another reason why we often don't model CAD chamfers because we can cam them, chamfer them in cam, and the cat, it just gets annoying. Model cam, I'll edit this setup that we just made. So we'll call this one machining on the palette, on the vice palette. Whereas this one was machining in the, in vice jaws. So right click, edit, Selected point would have been would be this point right here. So that's awesome because we can now use the reliable and easy to get to edge of this to do all our work uh, on the part here. So what do I need to do? It's actually pretty simple. Uh, we can do a an adaptive strategy. Same tool. Uh, you know, what? actually, three D is going to be easier because then I don't have to worry about. Well, actually, I could do. Now I want to do 3D, sorry, because it's going to avoid this better. So click cancel, 3D, adaptive clearing. And the nice thing is I don't have to click anything. I can just click OK for now. I've got an error on mine, sorry. And we're going to get a toolpath, and then we can dial that back in. Sweet. So see how by adding this chunk in here, it's going to avoid uh, that. So actually, we've got to fix our stock. See how it thinks our stock is up here? Uh, that's because we joined it down here. So we'll need to go back into CAD to fix that. And I know, folks, um, this is a little bit less fluid, but you know what? This is how the real world works. So sorry that this is running longer than our normal Fusion Fridays, but guess what? This is what I do, and I'm sure you guys have had similar frustrations. So activate the parent component, and let's take a look at everything. So great. All that happened was when we joined this component to, he uh, to the fixture plate, it, our stock um, got stuck up there. So if I click on my stock, this is actually pretty cool. Activate it. If I ch click on that sketch plane, so watch this. Right click and say redefine sketch plane. And I'm going to click. Oh, that's interesting. I've never come across this. Um, it's because, oh, that's so fascinating. The sketch plane is still linked to the top of this part, but because we did like a downstream move, 
in other words, after we did that, we moved the part um, somewhere down in here. I don't really, this is where I don't even know. It, basically, it's it's moving it. So all we need to do is move our stock. So we'll click on it, right click, move. And let's see if we can't, if it's an even increment, we're fine. It's not quite. So zoom in. Oh, yeah, it is. Good. Click. So it's just down half an inch. Click OK. That's not a great answer, guys. I'll be honest with you. It'll work, but I wish there was a better way to have those linked. Okay, sweet. Turn my stock off because I don't need to see it right now. Why am I only getting a toolpath there? Let's take a look at my heights. Stock top to model bottom is good. Uh, let's say machining boundary. Let's If I check stock contours, does that fix it? We might have to do a rest machining. Okay. That should fix it, but I don't like that selection as the stock contours. So let's fix that by right click, edit. What's my stock contour selection? Turn this back on and click that. Perfect, this should work. So we can still watch the whole thing in a simulation, which is pretty cool, by clicking on setups, the parent of both of these. Click simulate hit play. So the first thing in a vise when we're holding it <clears throat> is it's going to come down here and machine through this. That's going to let us poke our drill hole through it and then we're going to now move it over right now to this fixture plate which is going to be held in a, in a vise or straight, straight on the plate. We've got a clamp right here. As long as the clamp is smaller than this block, we won't have any collision. And this is going to take a while because I wanted to uh, remove all the material away. I don't want to slot it. You could slot it, but man, I hate slotting. And I probably want to take it easy until I figure out how rigid this whole setup is. But if you fast forward through here, you'll see. That's interesting why I didn't pick that up. I have no idea. Sorry, I just went in and um, well, let's make sure I do this again. If I pick my stock contours as this, okay, that may not work. So we'll click OK, see what happens. Yeah, that worked again. I have no idea why it just did that. Um, so if we simulate through everything, just do a rapid. Uh, boom, we're done. I left, I left um, 20 thou on the floor. So you would come back and clean that up with a 2D contour. And then what you would do is you would move, you've got access to these holes. You would put a little clamp right here and then you could come through and do the work right over here. So folks, hope you guys enjoyed. Stick around. We will machine one of these just for fun because this is a pretty cool little part. Definitely above, uh, just definitely not your basic part at all. So folks, I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys following. This was a Patreon part. Someone that follows us on Patreon. So if you are interested in supporting what you do and you enjoy this, uh, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Otherwise, take care. See you next Friday.